Hey, what's up? I'm going to look at resolving vectors. So a quick recap about what vectors are. Vectors are quantities with magnitude and direction, and we always represent them with an arrow like you can see here, the black line. The length of this arrow represents the magnitude, the size of that vector, and the direction of the arrow represents the direction that vector is acting in. So the topic today, resolving vectors. This simply means splitting a vector into horizontal and vertical components. So if you take this first vector here, this is a force that's acting at an angle. Things at an angle make, complicated, make calculations a lot more complicated. So we're going to split this into a vertical component, which you can see here, and horizontal component. So I'm going to call that FH for force horizontal and FV for the vertical component of the force. We can do that with a velocity vector. So this velocity is at an angle to the left. We can split that into a vertical component, the velocity, and we can split it into a horizontal component of the velocity. This applies to any vector, no matter what angle it is. And we're just looking in two dimensions. As a third example, we have a force acting at an angle here, and I can split this into a vertical component and a horizontal component, which you can see here. Really nice and easy. So resolving vectors just means splitting a vector into horizontal and vertical components. You can do that with um, scale diagrams, but we're gonna use a little bit of trigonometry to actually calculate the size of these horizontal and vertical components. So on this page, we've got four different vectors. A couple of them are forces and a couple of them are velocities. So number one, we've got a 25 Newton force acting at a 30 degree angle to the horizontal. A little bit of simple trigonometry is required to split them into the horizontal and the vertical components. I always do the same trick every single time. And it's a little way that I remember it. And if we resolve this vector across the angle, that's going to give me the horizontal component. And because I've gone across the angle, I'm going to use 25 cos 30 degrees, which gives me a value of 21.7 newtons. The other component, I have not gone across the angle, so I'm going to use 25 sine 30 degrees, which gives me a vertical component of 12.5 newtons. So there we go. We've simply split the 25 newton vector at an angle of 30 degrees into a horizontal and vertical components. We'll do three more. So number two, this time we've got a force acting in a different direction at an angle of 52 degrees, in this case, to the sort of vertical line. So let's go across the angle first. I'm going to resolve it this way, going across the angle. So because I've gone across, I'm going to use cos. So that's 300 cos 52 degrees. And that is a value of um, 184.7 newtons. That's the vertical component. The horizontal component, I'm not going across the angle here. So I'm going to use 300 sine 52 which gives me a value of 236.4 newtons. It's really important just to do a little check after you've done these calculations, just to make sure it makes sense. You can see that this vector is going more sideways than it is going down. So I'd expect the horizontal component to be larger than the vertical one, which is right. So it's a good little check to do. We've done two resolving vectors problems with forces, but we know that there's other vectors such as velocity and acceleration. So here I've got a velocity vector of 10 meters per second acting at an angle of 60 degrees to that vertical line. The first one that I always do is the one across the angle. So I'm gonna use 10 cos 60 degrees, which gives me a value of five meters per second. And the horizontal component now, because I'm not gonna cross the angle, I'm gonna use sine. So it's 10 sine 60 degrees, which is a value of 8.7 meters per second. Finally, just for the last one, we've got a, a vector of 250 meters per second at an angle of 70 degrees to the horizontal. I always go across the angle first. So I'm going to draw it going across the angle here. So the horizontal component of this velocity is 250 cos 70. I use cos because I went across the angle. And that gives me a value of um, 85.5 meters per second. And the vertical component, I'm not going across the angle this time. So I'm going to use 250 sine 70 degrees. And that gives me a value of 234.9 degrees. So there we have it. There's four examples just showing how to resolve vectors. A couple of key points. Vectors are quantities of magnitude and direction. 
Resolving simply means splitting into horizontal and vertical components. The way I remember how to do it is that if you go across the angle, it's cos, and if you don't, you use sine of the angle. That's it. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.